I keep it in my little office in the front. Best place to use it. And I read while I'm doing it. I got my Kindle. I put it on the large print and just read the whole time I'm doing it. I'm trying to figure out how to get Penthouse Magazine on my Kindle, and I just can't get it. My wife wouldn't appreciate it either. You notice that Conway's letter did not criticize Victorville for council not being representative of our Hispanic population. No. Only criticized us for our African American population. I'm assuming Eric is of Hispanic. <laughs> I don't know why they don't complain that the Irish Americans are not oh, adequately yeah. represented. Yeah, that's right. That's on with us. Yeah, come on. After Thursday night, you lose standing. <laughs> I'd love to have them. <laughs> Live in Appalachia. Yeah. I just got a wonderful. Oh, tip before, your finger. <laughs> Everybody's side plate. It is five o'clock, and I call to order the meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville. And the City Council seating is the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California 
Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District, and the Victorville Housing Trust. May we have roll call, please? Councilmember Kennedy? Here. Councilmember McEachern's absence is noted. Councilmember Negretti? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cox? Here. Mayor Garcia? Here. Wait, we have declaration of closed session by our city attorney. Thank you, Mayor Garcia. We have four items on the agenda this evening. Items A and B are existing litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D1. It's the SEC versus City of Victorville litigation, the full name of the case, and the case number set forth on the agenda. A is on behalf of the Airport Authority, and B is on behalf of the City Council. We have two other items on the City Council agenda, items C and D, both anticipated litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D2. With respect to C, pursuant to Government Code 54956.9E1, the facts and circumstances need not be disclosed at this time. With respect to item D, the facts and circum circumstances are set forth on the agenda. To the extent there is reportable action, we will report it at the conclusion of the closed session or at the commencement of the 6 o'clock uh, regular session. Thank you. I skipped over um, requesting for anyone in the audience to come forward and address the uh, council, but I don't see anyone present. Therefore, we will recess and um, do our closed session, and a regular session convenes at 6 p.m. It is 5.01, and I call to order the meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville, and the City Council sitting as the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District, and the Victorville Housing Trust. May we have roll call, please? Councilmember Kennedy? Here. Councilmember McEachern's absence is noted. Councilmember Negretti? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cox? Here. Mayor Garcia? Here. May we have closed session announcement by our city attorney, please? Thank you, Mayor Garcia. We had four items on the closed session agenda this evening. Two were existing litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D1. Uh, that was the SEC versus City of Victorville litigation. One was on behalf of the Airport Authority. Item B was on behalf of the City Council. Uh, no reportable action with respect to those items. Uh, item C was, again, for the City Council, uh, anticipated litigation pursuant to Government Code 546.9D2 and pursuant to Government Code 549, 54956.9E1. Uh, we need not disclose the facts and circumstances of this case. On this case, uh, item D is anticipated litigation pursuant to Government Code 54956.9D2, and the facts and circumstances pertaining to that is set forth on the agenda. There is no reportable action with respect to either item C or D. Thank you. At this time, we will have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. And first of all, the invocation. And the invocation will be delivered by Pastor Todd Arnett from the High Desert Church, and after that we will have the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Chief Sam Lucia. Please stand. Father God, we come before you tonight. Uh, very grateful, God, for the fact that we are a part of the city of Victorville. Thankful for the things that you are doing in our midst. Thankful for leaders like these who assemble together tonight. Our prayer would be that you would give them just great discernment and wisdom. Give them, God, compassion and love for the people that they govern and oversee. And God, we pray that this city would be a city that would honor you, that this city would be a place where people thrive. It would be a place, God, where people from all different backgrounds 
not just live side by side, but God, truly live out community. So would we be a place that honor you, and would this meeting tonight be one step further in that process? We thank you, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This evening we have uh, two presentations. Um, the first one will be a military banner presentation, and the uh, second one will be congratulations to Ryan and Sean Garcia for their achievements at the 2016 U.S. Boxing Junior and Youth Championship. And I will come down and do the uh, presentation. The city of Victorville is proud to have been the first city in the high desert to honor our currently deployed servicemen and women with our military banner program. Since this program debuted in 2007, we have presented close to 150 banners to our brave men and women currently serving a presidentially declared war zone. Uh, tonight, I have the great pleasure of presenting a military banner to honor and recognize Corporal Conrad Astorga. I would like to invite Corporal Astorga's wife, Cassandra, to join me, please. Thank you, Cassandra, for being here tonight as we dedicate this banner to honor your husband, Corporal Conrad Estorga. Conrad and Cassandra will have been married five years this April. And tonight is also a very special evening for their son, Christopher, as today is Christopher's fifth birthday. Happy birthday, Christopher. <laughs> Corporal Astorga has been a resident of Victorville since 2005, and he joined the United States Army in 2011. Corporal Astorga is currently deployed and serving in Iraq on his first deployment. On behalf of the city of Victorville, I would like to thank Corporal Astorga for his service to our country. I would also like to thank Cassandra, Christopher, and their entire family for their support of Conrad while he serves our country. When Corporal Astorga comes home this May, he and his family plan to go on a well-deserved vacation. When he returns, we look forward to meeting Corporal Astorga and honoring him with another ceremony to present him with his military banner. Until that time, Corporal Astorga's banner will be flown in our parking lot for all to see and appreciate. I'd like to bring your son over so that we can have some pictures taken. You can, yeah, bring them both. At this time, I, I would also like to thank the sponsor of Corporal Astorga's banner.
Judy White is an independent contractor with Applied Maintenance Supplies and Solutions in Apple Valley. Is that you? Corporal Estorga worked with Judy in the uh, civilian workforce a few years ago. He made such a favorable impression on Judy that when she heard he was serving in Iraq, Judy asked if she could sponsor a sign, a sign to honor and recognize him. Ms. White is the wife of one of our retired city building inspectors, Jim White. The Whites are here tonight to show their appreciation to Corporal Estorga. Thank you for your sponsoring this banner. Cassandra, is there anything that you would like to share? Um, I just wanted to first off thank Judy for everything. Um, sorry. <laughs> and um, just to let you know that Conrad also has very much appreciated you from before and to this day he still does, as you as well, Jim. And I just wanted to say thank you to Mayor Garcia for um, presenting us with this beautiful banner here. And thank you to Victor, Victorville City for um, just supporting all of the deployed soldiers from prior and even future ones. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I believe I was supposed to stand over there by the uh, banner. So we'll move over there so that you can take a picture over here. On behalf of the Victorville City <coughs> Council, I thank you for your family sacrifice and sincerely hope you know how much we appreciate your husband's service to our country. We will keep Conrad and your family in our thoughts and prayers. Now I have Ryan and Sean Garcia. Please come forward and join me. I wish I could say that I'm your relative. <laughs> 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 but anyhow, I can be your grandma if you yeah. want to. <laughs> I am very pleased to have this opportunity to recognize Ryan and Sean Garcia for their outstanding performances at the USA Boxing Junior and Youth National Championship in Reno, Reno, Nevada, this past January. Ryan won the 132-pound division. He served a gold medal. He received a gold medal and was named to the United States Youth Boxing Team. Ryan will travel to Russia in October to compete for the U.S. Uh, congratulations, Ryan. Uh, that, that's you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. You have to be Sean, right? <laughs> Sean Garcia won the silver medal in the 106-pound division and was named an alternate to the United States Youth Box Team. Congratulations, Sean. Through their hard work and dedication, these young men are distinguishing themselves as two of the best boxers in the country, and they are making Victorville very proud. <laughs> On behalf of the Victorville City Council, I present you with a certificate of recognition, Ryan. And on behalf of the Victorville City Council, I present Sean Garcia with a certificate. Thank you both. Congratulations.
Uh, this evening, we do not have any um, revision <coughs> or, or city clerk. Do we have any revisions uh, to the agenda? No revisions tonight, Mayor Garcia. Thank you. There are no revisions. Uh, we have no appeal hearings. And we also do not have any public hearings. So we move on to consent calendar. The consent calendar items C1 through C5 can be approved with one motion unless an item needs to be pulled for discussion. Move for approval of the consent calendar. Second. Motion by Mr. Cox, second by Mr. Kennedy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? No <laughs> opposed. Motion carries with Mr. McEachran absent. Now we move on to written communications. Item D1, approval of waste tire clean grant application. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read the uh, recommendation. Recommendation is that the City Council approve resolution number 16-010 entitled a resolution of the City of Victorville hereby authorizing the Director of Development to apply for a Cal Recycle Waste Tire Cleanup Grant Program cycle TCU 16. Thank you. Is there an action taken on this one? Yes. Second. Second by Mr. Cox, second by Mr. Kennedy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries with Mr. McEachran absent. Item D2, award of construction contract to Cooley Construction, Inc in the amount of $76,245 for the Stoddard Wells Road grading and paving project. Recommendation that the City Council, uh, Madam Clerk, please read the recommendation. Uh, the recommendation is that the City Council appropriate an additional $91,495 from fund number 250, Measure I, add the project to the Measure I five-year capital improvement plan and award a construction contract to Cooley Construction in the amount of $76,245.52 for the Stoddard Wells Road grading and paving project. Move approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Ms. Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries with Mr. McEachran absent. Item D3. Bear Valley Road Bridge over BNSF Railroad Additional Appropriation of Federal Highway Bridge Program Grant Funds. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, read the uh, recommendation. The recommendation is that the City Council appropriate an additional $177,060 of Federal Highway Bridge Program Grant Funds to the Bear Valley Road over BNSF Bridge Project for PSD plan specifications and estimates. Uh, just a question uh, for staff, uh, <clears throat> since it's on the agenda, could you tell us again what the time schedule is for this project, when it's going to start, when you think it'll finish? Keith, you want to handle that? You want me to handle that, or should we call Brian? Uh, I've got it right here. Oh, okay. um, right now, the process is for us to complete uh, all the design work, get the uh, plan specs and estimates done. Estimate start of construction is summer 2017. And how long do you think it'll take to finish the construction we tried Brian <laughs> is it is there a good chance that's going to make an even bigger mess on Bear Valley Road going over the railroad tracks temporarily certainly the construction is supposed to take about one year you can't do any overhead construction the fourth quarter of the year over the railroad tracks that's a BNSF requirement but the estimate is about a year and we figured out a way to keep all the lanes open during construction because it's going to be widened on both sides. So while they widen one side, all the lanes can remain open, then they'll widen the other side. But there will be some disruption still. You could, you could expect some congestion as a result. Say BNSF doesn't want any construction during the fourth quarter, fourth calendar year for fourth quarter Fiscal year, fourth quarter, federal, which is it's the fourth quarter of the uh, calendar year. Oh, okay. Yes, no overhead construction. You can do construction, but they don't want to 
um, stop any of their train traffic during that quarter. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they don't want to take the risk during the holiday shipping season. Okay. Did we have a motion here? We need a motion on this item. A move approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Ms. Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries with Mr. McEachern absent. Item D4, presentation of request to approve award to purchase four trucks under project number ES 16-063. Madam Clerk, read the uh, recommendation. Recommendation is that the City Council and the Victorville Water District Board of Directors approve the award to Sullen Ford for the purchase of four trucks under project number ES 16-063 as budgeted for in the fiscal year 2015-2016 capital improvement project budget. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Cox, second by Mr. Kennedy. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries with Mr. McEachern absent. Item D5, action plan for strategic planning uh, session. Uh, Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. Recommendation is that the City Council discuss and approve the recommended action plan. Madam Mayor, I have a quick comment. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I did appreciate the opportunity for us to uh, sit down together and talk about this. Uh, I thought we had uh, a really good conversation. Um, when you're when you're going from a session that we had to to now actually coming up with an action plan there are things that don't have timelines in here as an example and and i understand that i know uh you know we talk about customer service training or we do have something coming up with the uh, planned unit development uh, uh i believe there's a meeting on april 13th uh, but there's some things in here that uh i think we would like a little bit more detail on as we go through um, the year and just not wait till next year as an example to 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 go through this and just I, I would caution uh, city staff to you know these are, are certainly uh, recommendations and uh, you know when you start talking about uh, planned un unit developments as an example uh, those are very uh, specific and different from typical housing uh, that has occurred in the past uh, there's a lot of pros and cons when you have uh, larger uh, projects like that, but there's also a lot of opportunities, and I hope that uh, the city staff will work with our stakeholders uh, and, and really uh, do something we can all be proud of. I know that uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm uh, from all the folks that have been involved when we uh, talk about you know, the future planning of our city, and one of the things is also possibly to think outside the box. Uh, there are other ways to uh, go about things. I know as a skate park, as an example, is something that uh, is a high priority for me. And I, n I understand that uh, there are limitations uh, within the city-owned property, and et cetera, et cetera. And, and I certainly understand that. Uh, but I would just uh, ask uh, for some creative recommendations on everything that we talked about. Uh, <clears throat> because there's a lot of great information in here. I would just lean on and defer to city uh, staff to uh, be a little creative in, in, in hopefully getting us to where we'd like to be. Um, but uh, I, I think we, that was a great uh, session we had. I'm looking forward to just a lot of these things evolving. Yeah, and the, uh, the purpose of this item is to have some formal adoption of those things that were discussed uh, a couple of months ago. Um, the actual action plan itself uh, is intended to occur. This, these are the things we intend to do during this calendar year. Um, the only one that I would caution the council on that um, is a bit of a bigger project and with uh, the focus on PUDs and specific plans would be number four, develop a plan growth strategy. I don't, I don't think we're going to accomplish that in calendar year 2016, but we can at least make some, some strides in that direction. That's the intent. But everything else um, is intended to be accomplished within calendar year 2016 um, and where we knew or already had it in the planning horizon with a month, we tried to add that just for specificity. But, but overall, with the exception of the plan growth strategy, I believe all these things will be accomplished. And then we intend to have another uh, sort of, rather than just a revisit, which is what this one was, sort of starting afresh, granted 
many of the strategic goals will likely be similar or the same but we want to do this on a recurring every other year basis following an election so we're looking at probably a january maybe early february time frame for our next strategic plan to incorporate you know any new comments from potentially new council members um just a comment on the on item number two um code enforcement uh sunday morning my wife and i we live in the green tree area and we we walked it's something we don't do often but we walked over to the ihop uh we should do it every sunday but uh I'm not promoting IHOP, it was just a nice walk. <laughs> but one of the things that happens when you walk through town as opposed to drive through town is you see things that you never see as you're just moving down the street. And so we, we had a chance to walk through a number of parking lots uh, along the 7th Street uh, with some of the uh, uh, changes we've made in the medians. But one of the things we both noticed was the condition of a lot of the parking lots along 7th Street and it's pretty shabby uh, pretty bad um, I don't know who is actually responsible for keeping the trash out of the parking lots and the plastic bags that grow across blow across the parking lots into the bushes and hang up in bushes and it just creates a kind of a general messy condition um, and I know we've talked about this some in further uh, north on 7th Street in the Old Town area. But I would sure like to see us address just the trash conditions. Um, we can't put tenants in abandoned buildings when they're empty. We can't force that, but we it seems like we can do more to deal with some of the trash that we see on 7th Street. Yeah, we, we can certainly send an officer that direction and, and other areas as well if anyone knows of any. We've had some success uh, with other retailers, although the conditions tend to come back. Um, you know, our ability to use code enforcement to really enforce those things has is sort of in a gray area, I'll say. Um, but just simply code enforcement officer paying a visit to the manager um, has effectuated those cleanups pretty quickly. Um, it's an ongoing issue, though. Uh, we can certainly send someone that direction. We need a motion on this? Oh, there is a motion needed on this item. Second. Motion by Mr. Negretti, second by Mr. Cox. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Motion carries with Mr. McEachern absent. Item D6, reorganization. Uh, Madam Clerk, with the uh, recommendation. That the City Council approve the reorganization, which includes salary and position changes effective April 1, 2016. Madam Mayor, members of the Council, um, this is a fairly small reorganization that I'm proposing. Um, it sort of was born out of our um, looking into recruiting uh, for our former Public Works Director, who really was overseeing three and a half departments or so. Um, looking at the possibility of hiring probably two and maybe even three uh, additional department heads, putting them on contract, uh, the salary demands and things of a contract position was just not something that uh, we were uh, ready to propose or interested in proposing, to be honest. So um, I sat down with uh, Mr. Metzler and uh, also with Mr. Webb uh, to discuss sort of the overall city organization and came up with this plan to make a bit more of a hierarchical um, uh, setup in the city. Um, it effectively puts four uh, department head level positions uh, reporting to each of two assistant city managers, uh, Mr. Metzler and Mr. Webb, um, and then uh, with one sort of an in-between position, a contract department head, uh, over development reporting directly to me in the past the council has made it clear that's an area that you want my direct involvement in so i maintain that um, but just spreading those duties out a little bit and that uh, that supervision and oversight out a little bit frees up a lot of my time to be able to concentrate on development as well as concentrate on some of the strategic initiatives that the council has has laid out uh, in our work plan um, ultimately uh, this gives both mr metzler and mr webb a larger piece of the organization they're responsible for takes them more so out of the day-to-day -day operations of those individual departments to more of an oversight role. Uh, this was possible because of the good staff that we have in place now that we didn't want 
uh, to lose and didn't want to bring someone new in. So that's the purpose of it, um, and it does uh, result in about $150,000 a year savings through the elimination of that contract position um, and no additional positions. Uh, there are some adjustments in responsibilities as a result. Uh, the airport director, uh, should that title be adopted, would take on a larger role at the airport as would uh, the economic development director, should that title be adopted, would take on a larger role in the actual day-to-day -day operations of uh, marketing as well as some real estate uh, issues. Uh, Mr. Metzler would still provide that oversight. Uh, as Mr. Webb would pro provide similar oversight over community services, which that director currently reports to me. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor, um, I I have uh, read this uh, carefully, and, and uh, I have some concerns that uh, Mr. Metzler is uh, taking on an even greater role. However, that's between Mr. Metzler and the city manager. But we have talked about how important it is the base and how full that plate is. And I had assumed they were going to hire uh, at least one and probably two department heads take on the functions, but as of now, uh, that's not going to occur, and uh, I, if, if the city manager believes that the reorganization should occur as he has proposed it, uh, you know, he's going to be responsible. I agree that he should do that. I've looked at the salaries. Uh, it's not uh, very, it's not a very much of an increase. The reorganization occurs now. I'm, I'm concerned about a little bit of perception that we deal with uh, salaries at, uh, for all the employees at one time and we deal with salaries and benefits at the budget time and we're making some changes uh, when we're not dealing with the other employees. Um, sometimes that has to occur. It may or may not be necessary for the manager to come back to the council for more, more modifications as this works or doesn't work. But I'm going to vote no on the whole issue because I am opposed to employment agreements with department heads and assistant city manager. I understand um, city manager has a contract. Um, a lot of this is personal. When I laid off 200 employees, they got two week notice. Um, they had responsibilities. It was heartbreaking, but they didn't get six months or nine months of severance pay. They didn't have a contract. And these employees, I think, to keep the philosophy that we work, that they all work for the city, they all work together, they're all equal, and it's the employees themselves who do the work. My belief has been in the past that this drives a wedge between management and employees, and I think you're inviting unions uh, to do this sort of thing. I'm opposed to it. I'll be voting no for that reason, not because of the reorganization, not because of the salaries, but because of the contracts. Well, can we address those two, those issues separately? In other words, the reorganization is one issue and the contracts. Jim, you're, you're suggesting there really need not be a contract for anybody but the city manager? That's my preference. Con the city, city manager, the city Attorney should have contract, but I can't, I just, I don't know, I just can't get an agreement from my philosophy and, and how the, it's viewed by all the other employees. It seems to add protection for certain employees, puts them in a category. I would like to treat all the employees the same. We appreciate all the employees. If we don't add that protection to other employees that do key work or other department heads, I just think it's wrong. I won't vote for it. Just, just for clarification's sake, these employees are currently on, on contract. Uh, their contracts include uh, recurring uh, reauthorizations every two years, similar to the way mine has been written in the past. Um, these are not new contracts. These are extensions to existing contracts with a new implementation date of April 1st, just for the council's information. How many do we have on contract? Uh, at this point, we have myself. Uh, Mr. Metzler and Mr. Weber both on contract, and there are two others uh, that are on contract at this time. So previously we had as many as six or seven, I know at least six. What is, explain the rationale for the contract employees. Um, I, 
I have employees. Nobody has a contract. Right. I don't even have a contract. Right, right. It's it's becoming more typical with uh, executive level employees, city manager, assistant city manager, deputy city managers. It's less popular with department head positions. Um, I can tell you right now, I don't have any intention of adding any department heads on to a salary position. Um, it was something that was expressed to me by other city managers that it has been effective uh, for them. Um, I don't want to say that it has or hasn't been effective. Um, I haven't seen a lot of change one way or the other, whether department heads were on contract or not. So I'm disinclined to add any additional contracts at this point in time. Uh, with the assistant city manager positions, there is at least an assumption on my part that they tend to be uh, more in the public, more uh, engaging with the council and more susceptible should there be a significant change on the council to being terminated uh, without cause. And that's, that's the entire purpose. Um, uh, you know, it's something that we've talked about on several occasions. Uh, I understand Mr. Cox's uh, disagreement with me on it. Um, it. It's just a difference of opinion in, to me. Is the council ever in a position to look at a position below your level and make a, a hiring or a, determ uh, a termination decision? That's really more of a legal question. It's, it's not typical. The municipal code says you hire the city attorney and you hire me, and everyone below me works for me. Right. The decision-making process with respect to administration of the city is up to the city manager. Here, to the extent you're willing to do it, you can do contracts and go and it basically Ms. Robinson could still set the salaries and the benefits and be in charge of all of that. He just has done the contract, which the council would have to authorize the contracts. It gives both, I think the philosophy is both parties and have a higher level of commitment to one another. My purpose for wanting contracts is that when you get to the level of department head and especially higher, that um, if there is, if there are issues, I'll say, the thought of going through an extended disciplinary process with someone who has some measure <coughs> of power over this larger portion of the organization is just untenable. Um, it, for me, it's a decision that I would need to make and simply terminate that person uh, if there were a disciplinary action that rose to that level. Um, the protections of regular line employees are, are effective. Uh, they're very real and disciplinary actions take a very long time and that's that was my original purpose my original desire for putting uh, you know management level and higher employees on contract was to eliminate that we can simply have a conversation and it's not working out it's not working out and we can move on without having to keep someone employed through a disciplinary procedure that can be cumbersome well just just I'll make this comment and I think it's probably all I have to say I, I don't uh I don't have a, any particular feeling one way or the other about the contract and if they're already in place and this is extending them, I, I guess I'm reluctant to just remove them. Uh, th my only objection to the contracts that I read was the difference in the severance period. We reduced yours, as you know, this year. And I believe those severance periods ought to be six months. I don't see any reason for a difference in the severance period between the two assistant city managers. So. That would be a change I would want to make. Other than that, I, I guess I don't have a real problem with the contracts. And part of that has to do with, with their, their plans. Um, I don't want to make announcements for Mr. Webb, but in the conversation, you'll notice the terms are also different. Uh, in our conversations, the three of us, Mr. Webb has indicated that he in intends on retiring either on or before the termination of his contract, which would be December of 2018. Um, that's part of the reason why there was no change made. His severance previously was, was six months, um, was, isn't a great concern of his, isn't a great concern of mine or Mr. <coughs> Metzler's with the current council, to be honest. Um, so that's the difference for the term was his was previously six months. He didn't indicate a desire to make it longer. Mr. Metzler's previously was 12 months, as was mine. Um, in respect to the council's desire, when my new contract was adopted, you reduced it to nine months. So Similarly, I matched uh, that contract. Mr. Metzler was put on contract about three months after I was. His contract mirrored mine then, and it effectively mirrors mine now. It's a four-year, although he has six months remaining now, so in effect, it's more of a three-and-a-half-year extension, which is similar <coughs> to what I, what I had. So that's, that's the reasons behind it. 
I understand it may look a little bit odd to have differences. They are things that we discussed and we're all comfortable with. I have a question. Uh, how long have these uh, other uh, folks been on contract or when it, were they originally? Uh, Mr. Metzler originally went on contract September of 2011. Uh, Mr. Webb, probably about a year after that. Is that correct, Bill? I want to say July of 2012 is my guess, without looking looking it up right now. Uh, um, at that point, uh, Mr. McGlade, who's no longer here, was on contract. Uh, Mr. Guntert has been on contract for, I want to say, two years now, and I believe uh, Mr. Borchert probably a little less than that, maybe a year, year and a half. Well, uh, we'll get it off the off the dime here. I'll move approval for the uh, reorganization. Is that with the modified? Oh, just the reorganization. Oh yeah, I'll just approve what's re what's uh, suggested. I mean, I, I those those explanations make sense to me. So that would then include the salary and position changes. Recommendation is uh, as well as the contracts. Just to be clear. That yeah. is paid. Yeah, includes. It's reorganization, which includes salary position changes, right? right. Okay. Right. Second. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Negretti. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. <laughs> Motion carries with Mr. Cox voting no and Mr. McEachern absent. Item D7, consent to dual representation by Best, Best and Krieger of City of Victorville and Civic Rogers. LLC and employee CIF, CIF LLC. Um, Madam Clerk, please read the uh, recommendation. The recommendation is that the City Council consider whether it is appropriate to provide for the approval of the consent to dual representation and should such dual representation be approved, authorize the City Manager to execute the disclosure and consent letter on behalf of the City. Madam Mayor, I read this a couple of times, maybe three times, and I lost. I just have no idea <laughs> what we're doing or why we're doing it. <laughs> somebody explain. If I might explain, um, Best Best and Krieger currently serves as your employment labor council. So any time that they were to represent any other entity that might have an adverse position to the city, they have to come and seek a consent and a waiver from the client, which you are their client. Here they want to represent an entity that previously entered into an owner participation agreement with the former redevelopment agency. Uh, it, tr it was a tran complicated transaction that was never fully developed, so there are some basically open-ended issues as to performance requirements, so they want to represent the developer uh, in that capacity. Unlikely to have any uh, conflict or interference with their role in terms of their providing employment and labor representation to you, but in order for them to be able to represent the private sector entity, they need your consent. And there are some protections in the letter if to the extent at any time a conflict should appear to arise, we could raise that. They, at that point, they'd have to disqualify the representation. So they're just seeking to represent essentially a private developer to, uh, to, uh, to determine whether or not there are ongoing obligations under an owner participation agreement. You don't see any problems with I don't see any problems as long as it's a very limited representation. But again, it's your decision, not my decision. I'll move approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Kennedy, second by Mr. Cox. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? None opposed. Motion carries with Mr. McEachern absent. Now we, <clears throat> we move on to public comments. And I do have uh, one card. Um, Michael, uh, I'm not sure I can pronounce your last name. Reka? Reka? Three minutes, yes, sir. This is the first time I've used my uh, timer on my clock. Okay. We will keep you informed of your time. Okay. Um, the reason I'm here is. Um, 
to request the city council a contract awarded in January 26 for the citywide air conditioning maintenance contract. Can you get closer to the microphone, please? Thanks. Uh, request um, uh, cancellation. Uh, I was a participant. I was actually the low bidder on the contract, and I was disqualified for improper reasons by the city staff. I'd like to briefly go over those. I have a detailed summary that my attorney's already filed with the city of um, the, the improprieties by the city staff. The, the first was uh, they called me the day after the sealed bids were turned in and they said I had two days to amend my bid with additional pricing, which was not in the bid summary. And if I didn't do that, I'd be disqualified. I did that and um, then they decided um, that I did not properly, uh, well, first of all, you can't amend a bid, a sealed bid after award, or after it's open. You have to cancel it, amend it, and give the bidders new time to bid it. You can't just informally request a modification to a sealed bid. So that's, that should be an immediate cancellation. Second thing is they told me I didn't properly attend the job walk. Now, uh, a job walk by the city standards is you meet, you're on there on time, you sign in, and you wait for the whole meeting. That's the procedure. The city staff feel that I should have done a detailed summary of all the equipment, even though a detailed summary already existed in the, in the uh, set of specifications. Uh, it's not a legal reason to disqualify. There has to be a legal reason such as I didn't attend the job walk. Um, and that was the basis of my disqualification. And number three, they, did not, they issued an internal memorandum on the 13th of January that I was disqualified, but they did not share that with me, so I did not know I was not gonna be awarded on January 26th, and therefore I could not defend my case. So, you know, the city's obligated to follow the rules just like I'm obligated to follow the rules, and they can't arbitrarily amend the rules to make it convenient for whoever they want to be awarded the contract. Therefore, I feel it's only fair that the contract be canceled and I'd be given a second chance to be awarded as I was the low responsive and responsible bidder. You have 30 seconds. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor, normally, when an individual approaches the city council, it's on an item that if it, we had known about it, it could have been agendized. We don't generally discuss it because maybe other members of the public would have been here had they known we were going to discuss it. Uh, so this item, we cannot engage in debate or discuss it directly with you. But because I've heard this issue before, I'd request City Council refer this matter to the City Attorney. And the Attorney can report back to Council at the next meeting and we can agendize it. Okay. Is that the consensus of the Council? Okay. Any information that you have and data and writing and documents, you need to forward them immediately to the City of Victorville Attention City Attorney. This should be in, in the and just leave it then, but but uh, what, whatever data you want to have considered, we have to have that. Uh, just for the city council's benefit, I am aware that the risk manager has had some correspondence uh, with uh, the legal firm involved here, so certainly he can provide that to the city attorney and get him up to speed. We can, Perhaps this is a I can coordinate with the city, the with the risk manager as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. okay, very well. Uh, city manager, uh, reports from city manager. Yeah, there's a couple of upcoming events. Um, tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Uh, at the Hilton Garden Inn, we have our uh, Bear Valley Road information session. It's intended for those businesses along Bear Valley Road who will be at least somewhat impacted by the repaving of that and, and pouring concrete uh, over the summer, uh, beginning, I believe, in April. Um, our public is invited to that as well, but the intent is for those uh, businesses to come and ask questions. We'll have city engineer there. We'll have uh, other management there as well as uh, I suspect some of the council may show up. Um, and that is, again, 6 p.m. Uh, at the Hilton Garden Inn in the conference center in the back. <coughs> uh, coming up March 26th is our spring festival and Easter egg hunt. 
uh, at uh, Hook Park. It's always a popular event. Uh, it's actually starting out with a run in the park at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, if you're a runner. Uh, and then uh, we are still taking volunteers for the community cleanup day, which is going to happen on April 9th. Uh, you can get a nice photo taken and be part of the statistics in next year's State of the City. Hopefully we'll have more than 1,000 volunteers again and collect tons and tons more trash. So, And then finally, um, just I'd, I'd like to apologize on behalf of our fire chief, Dan Muncy. Um, he brought me some leftover cookies from our rotary meeting um, that somehow had managed to find their way to my place setting uh, during our break in rotary, and he, he brought them to me. And I just want to apologize, since he didn't bring any for the council, I'm happy to share the cookies that, that he brought me if, if any of you are interested. Did he hand those to you after he touched them? Uh, I do not know. All I know is they showed up at my lunch setting uh, when we did our, our open networking, yet. and they happened to show up here, and he winked at me when he came in the room. So oh, well, I'm I don't want to making, touch them at all now. I'm, I'm making assumptions that he was involved at both occasions. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, pay, payback is tough when you have a microphone in front of you. Dan. Council members, any reports? I have one item. The uh, road condition at uh, Palmdale Road and I-15, the interchange on each side, is getting worse as each day goes by. When are we going to repave that, or our Caltrans, or the city and Caltrans jointly? It just can't keep going this way. Yeah, we, we actually reached out to Caltrans, we being uh, Mr. Gangler, the city engineer, and uh, what I'll do based on that is ask him to forward the comments from Caltrans. Um, I will say that it was not good news. We're looking at sometime in 2017. Um, I intend to follow up or have staff follow up. There are some areas that are much, much worse than others, and Palmdale and I-15 is one of them, and then again at Palmdale, and I want to say it's Amargosa, but I'm not sure. Um, where it's not just that it's ground, but there's actually huge potholes that are developing as a result. So um, effectively what the email said was that they don't have any plans in 2016. They plan to actually r finally repave that sometime in 2017. But I'll, I'll ask him to kind of summarize that in a memo to you and then also to reach out to see if some of those more problem areas can have something done. Maybe they can be ground again to eliminate some of that... Uh, up and down in the pavement. I think it's it's deteriorated to the point that it appears to be that the flying gravel and small pebbles are becoming dangerous to the vehicles and uh, it seems to me that maybe if we can't get Caltrans to work we need to ask the mayor to direct a letter to the appropriate committee in Sacramento including our senator and our assembly person. Um, this, this is a Roads are in bad shape. I think it's a hazard. Why can't we fix it? Maybe we need to. I mean, it's it's a state highway, but 7th Street is a state highway. Uh, Palmdale Road's a state highway. All I mean, that's a city street. Why can't Maybe if we fix it, it'll l let the governor have a, a few more dollars for his speed train to nowhere. But uh, this just can't keep going. It's horrible. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. we need to put it on the agenda and make the repairs if the state refuses. Yeah, we, we can certainly do that. Um, I don't know if you're looking at wanting to repave the whole thing. I suspect that would, all of any of that, anything we want to do to Caltrans Highway would require a, a permit from Caltrans, which, um, not to beat them up too much, but I don't know that that would come any faster than their actual resolution themselves, to be honest, from what I've seen in the past. But uh, certainly we'll reach out directly to the director of District 8 and express these concerns and uh, sort of let him know what's headed his way um, if we can't get some sort of relief uh, to the situation sooner than, than what they're currently proposing. Looks like a great opportunity for the Daily Press to take two pictures, one of the horrible condition of this road and one is a agricultural field where the train is supposed to go to no place and say your tax dollars at work thanks to the governor. I mean there's got to be some pressure to be brought here because of the ridiculousness of that. Uh, there's damage being done to automobiles. Not that I don't think that the governor cares, but he probably doesn't. But that's why we have government. And if the state's not going to react, I, I think uh, we don't have a choice but to start moving forward as a council. Hate to do it. I don't think we should do it. 
our roads are in such condition that we need to spend those dollars better. And we have another solution. Uh, since I'm the recipient of a damaged windshield as a result of a truck, we can have the whole area marked not a truck route and prohibit trucks from driving on it. At least that'll reduce some of the property damage that's occurring. Very well, we can do that. Anything else? Yes, I uh, have a couple comments, Madam Mayor. Uh, <clears throat> I really appreciate all the efforts the city has. Uh, the clean up week, uh, clean sweep weekend, the uh, community cleanup day that's uh, upcoming, and I certainly encourage folks to uh, to participate. I know I will. Um, you know, no matter how much work we do out there, the wind has a way of uh, making uh, plastic bags uh, just available. <laughs> just as soon as we're done, it just it goes back out there, and that's okay. I and, and I certainly just want to thank all the folks that have participated in these clean, community cleanup weekends um, because it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, and you look around this community. Uh, I have been getting off at a certain exit uh, for the last eight years, and uh, I would just like to thank the Sheriff's Hope team and the city staff for addressing things like the homeless moving from place to place. Um, there was one particular place I highlighted, and that was addressed uh, with a homeless issue, and I really appreciate that. Um, but certainly, I just hope that the city residents know that city staff are working these issues uh, it's a continuous issue. The Hope Team, Sheriff Team is doing a fantastic job. Uh, but that doesn't stop things from happening out there. I mean, uh, shopping carts, as an example. You know, it's the first thing you see when you come into the city. And it's just like, okay, I, we, we are working these issues. But I would also like to highlight, in addition to the community cleanup, I will be uh, pointing out some illegal dumps that I've been uh, alerted to. Uh, I was not aware. I'm not an off-road person. I don't have an off-road vehicle. But apparently some of my uh, folks I talk to uh, have told me about some issues. And uh, I'd like to bring it up and uh, continue working with the city staff and the great folks that are out there that care. But you know, just as much as we care about uh, our desert, there's some folks that don't. And they're going to keep doing what they're going to keep doing. And we're going to keep doing what we can do in a positive way. So I thank everyone for being involved and look forward to uh, be more active in this because it's a continuous problem. Yeah, let us know that location and we we can send a crew out there to simply clean it up. We found that more effective than uh, trying to go through the lengthy code enforcement process to, to get the property owner to clean it up. Anything else? If not, this meeting is adjourned. I knew it was